<laughs> okay, see, we are already started. Hey everybody, this is Earl Jones, farm insurance agent, coming to you with my very first interview with a member of my, what are you, like, you're my B&I chapter member. Yeah, uh, to a um, B&I, do you want to mention B&I? Well, we just did. We actually just did. But anyway, well, B and I so, was worth mentioning. Yes, B and I is worth anyway. mentioning. But John Parson here is the attorney of record of fact of John Parson Law Firm. John Parson is a business lawyer um, and has been in Palo Alto for how many years now? Thirty-nine years. Forty years in November. Forty years in November. Wow. Mm, very enjoyable too. I must say, I've seen a lot of changes in those years, Earl. When I started, uh, we didn't even have personal computers yet. I remember oh when, when, when <laughs> you didn't have personal computers. We, 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 we did not have personal computers, and, and so the first one I, I got, we had to drive down to um, a Silicon Valley Boulevard, South San Jose, mm -hmm. and and it was this uh, off-brand, and in one floppy drive, five and a quarter inch floppy drive, you would have the operating system, and in the other floppy drive, you would have your storage media maybe about 50 pages per floppy disk. Wow. A lot of difference, a lot of changes over the years. Lots of difference, lots of changes. But, you know, I, I asked John to do this interview um, because, number one, one of the things I want to do differently um, as an insurance agent is make sure that I give my future clients and clients, you know, really good, strong content because you have experienced what business owners go through when they don't have the right insurances in place without violating any you know confidentiality can you talk about from a high level like what's that like from a lawyer's point of view what you've seen happen when a business owner let's say a bar restaurant because that's what you specialize in right I, I do I represent a number of bars restaurants uh, spas salons uh, uh, dojos that kind of owner operated hands-on that's what mm -hmm. I love about business yes yeah so from that point of view can you know can you talk about like what you've seen happen in California, because that's where we're at, like if you didn't know, right? Um, what happens when a business owner finds himself in a situation where you know, they don't have um, liability coverage to protect them in the event of a wrongful termination? Yes, yes, it happens a lot. I've, I've had the uh, pleasure and privilege to represent a, a number of owners over the years who have unfortunately been sued. The number one risk these days, I believe, for these small owner-operator business are the employee complaints. Oh. Many, many complaints. Some result in litigation. Some result in claims with the labor commissioner. The state of the law in California has gotten so complex that it's almost impossible for a small mom-and-pop operation to fully comply. Right. The state expects you in your one-person business, let's say, right. to operate with the same level of specificity, completeness, and accuracy as a Google or Facebook who is supported by a staff of HR professionals. Right. It is to be expected that people caught up in the day-to-day -day operations of their business will not do everything completely right all the time. Therefore, you can expect to be sued by employees who claim they didn't get rest breaks, they didn't get meal breaks, either they weren't paid everything or they were paid not enough, there wasn't a premium for overtime for some hours that they think should have been overtime. It becomes very difficult. The number one rule for employers are records, must have good records to support what's going on. But you will be sued. Mm -hmm. But you, when you say good records, are you talking about, because when I started my agency, um, I in, immediately had a handbook. What's the value of having a handbook as you relate that to records? Um, a handbook is one of the records that you should have. A handbook is, I believe, absolutely essential in this day and age in California. Mm -hmm. And that is because a handbook lets the employees know what the expectations are. It informs the employees of what their rights and duties are right. so that later, if an employee doesn't remember being told something, you can point to a handbook and say, look, it's here very clearly. See how you signed on page 12? So you do recommend that employers have their employees sign to confirm that they got the handbook and that they've read the handbook? Absolutely. 
absolutely. More than that, if the primary language of your employee is Spanish, let's say, it should be translated into uh, Spanish these days. Wow. That's becoming more and more important. Otherwise, there's a tendency for, for let's say, it's a cook uh, who uh, doesn't need English uh, to, to do uh, his or her job. Uh, something's presented to them. Mm -hmm. They want the job. Right. They dutifully sign. Right. Never read it. Even if they'd looked at the pages, maybe they wouldn't have understood it. That's not effective. That's not what we want to see done. When you say we, you're talking about the mag the the courts, or are you talking about the people up in Sacramento? Well, right now I'm talking about me. I, I identify very strongly. I, I come from a working class background. I've always worked my whole life. I've never had it easy. I know what it's like to need to pinch pennies, right. make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I hate to see these people who have invested so much of their life, their blood, their sweat in this, to now have it all ri at risk right. because they didn't have the right coverage that now we see they should have had. True. Um, because at Farmers Insurance, you know, from the company I was with before, I can pretty much design a employer's protection plan from A to Z. So I literally can cover their workers' comp, their employee liability coverage, uh, wrongful termination, whatever they need to ensure that they are protected in the event of a claim against them, I can do that now as a farmer's agent. The other company, well, you know, hey, not so much. But for you, the thing I like about having you in my arsenal is that you can talk to the business regardless of where they're at. So have you worked with clients who are already established and then you sat down and you met with them and then got them on the right track? Talk about, about that. Yeah, very much so. A, a lot of restaurants, in fact, do not even have the most simplest of handbooks. Oh. There are default laws implied, uh, imposed by the state of California which will apply unless your handbook in a single sentence removes that from application. So for example, uh, on your, on California now has a paid leave, uh, sick leave law. Mm -hmm. um, that will continue to accrue if the employee doesn't use it, but a handbook can, or an agreement can cut off the, the accrual over time. Wait, wait, back up, John, because that's huge for businesses here in California. If I understand you correctly, a simple phrase or a simple agreement that the employee signs that states that vacation time is not accrual. It cuts off, and, and you will say it cuts off at, let's say, 48 hours, that kind of thing. Got it. Okay, so that it doesn't roll over in an increasing amount, where eight years later you're surprised you, you hadn't accounted for these this accrual of, uh, yeah, very significant. Something else, rest breaks. Oh, let's the talk number. about rest breaks. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Rest breaks. Because <laughs> yes. I've, I've, I've had, you know, I've had employees, right? Um, uh, and I, I was very much on them about taking breaks and lunch at so many hours and so many times. Good. Um, and then I had to make good. them clock in, clock out. Right. And then um, because I'm you know, prior banking and prior B2B sales background, I knew to like, if they didn't, I had to write it up, document them the whole nine yards. But see, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Earl, right? But you, I'm so glad you brought that up because I remember a client that was facing um, a lawsuit with the labor boards in the state of California over break. So what can a, what can a business owner do to protect themselves from stuff like that? There are two steps. Let me begin by the background law. The law says that you must permit an employee to take a 10-minute paid break, 10-minute paid break afternoon, 10-minute in the morning. Get two breaks in your standard eight-hour divided into four-hour shifts. If they do not take a break, they can later claim, for a period of up to three years later, they can claim that they were denied that break and therefore they get one extra hour of compensation. If an employee is prohibited or in any way inter they, their break is interfered with, then they get one hour compensation. Oh. Added on. Now. Oh. 
Okay, oh now there's something else. There, there's a wonderful provision mm -hmm. for employees in California law. When your employee quits or you fire them, you must pay them everything they're owed. Okay, everything they're owed. It must be paid. If you fire them, you must pay them when you fire them. If they give you a notice, you've got to pay them within 72 hours. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay them everything, their wages will continue to run for 30 days. Day wages, 30 days until they're paid or for 30 days. That's a kick in the head. They're going to get 30 days, not a month, 30 work days of compensation because you didn't pay them their break differential. Wow. They don't need to claim the break differential, appreciate. Right. So here's the way it happens all the time. God, I don't know how many hundreds of times I've seen this. Employee is either three ways. Mm -hmm. They're angry at their former employer. Right. They really need money, or they're about to leave the country. And in all those three situations, they will file a claim with the labor commissioner. And they will routinely claim that for three years, that's the statute of limitations, they never got, never once got a rest break. Never once. Never once. I'm going to say that one more time. Never once did I get a rest break in three years of working there will be the claim. And now it's up to the employer who is duty bound to maintain records showing the hours work for their employees. Now the burden shifts to the employer to show Right now, we're talking in February of 2019. On April 17th of 2018, did you take your break or not? On January 4th of 2015, did you take your break or not? It's impossible, sir, to prove today what happened on either of those two days years ago. The only solution is a routine practice where the employer can say under oath, with a clear, honest heart. Yes, they took their breaks. How do you know that, sir? I know that because all of my employees take their breaks. I monitor it. It's in their employee handbook. I have them sign a single-page document. It's in there. I monitor it. I'm going to show you my records here. Clock in, clock out. First and end of day. Clock, in, or clock out, clock in for lunch. And look, I've had them check where they took their rest breaks morning and afternoon every day. Unfortunately, this level of detail is about the only way an employer can really protect themselves. It's a huge amount of preparation. The solution, once you have a system in place, mm -hmm. oh, you've got the system in place, you just monitor the system, make sure it stays in place, and now you're covered. So the takeaway, as far as I'm concerned, is you must anticipate the problem, Solve the problem by a system in place, and then you can worry about business and not your employees. Yes, and see, that's that's a good thing because um, cause if you're worried about the other stuff, you can't be focused on the business. And the business is what drives the revenue, and the business is what takes care of everything else. So I'm really glad that we're talking about, you know, that those themes such as to cover break time because I have no idea and I'm, I'm glad that I'm talking to you now. I got one more question for you. Um, what, where do you see the labor laws heading to in the state of California, say in the next 10, 15 years? Do you see that the labor laws are gonna be a little bit more relaxed to help find a balance, or do you see that the California labor laws are gonna be such that um, the small, the mid-sized businesses are gonna be even more pressed to um, and, and, and to these big boxes that they just don't fit in because they just don't have the resources. Right. Um, one, for, first of all, I, I left my crystal ball at home. But, <laughs> but <laughs> we have a problem in California in that we have a very politically charged legislature that has no idea what it takes to run a business anymore. Mm. And all they know is there's a lot of people here and there's more people coming and they all need money somehow. And even though it's illegal to work, if an illegal worker works, 
They're entitled to everything. Back up. Say what? So, case came down, California Supreme Court, oh, God, probably about 16, 16 months ago now. And, and um, an undocumented um, person who had entered the country illegally had forged employment papers. They got a job with an employer. The employer subsequently discovered that these were fraudulent documents they'd presented with. Mm -hmm. This is not some simple mistake. Right. The employee had fraudulently presented documents. Right, okay. Well, the employer was outraged and fired him. Yes, good, okay. Well, the employee appreciated what was coming down, so fired a worker, filed a worker's comp claim before he was let go. Now, the question becomes, if someone has illegally obtained employer employment by fraudulent means, are they still entitled to the full panoply of rights and privileges and benefits of people who are who've played the game legally? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. In California, absolutely yes. And this case came down 18 months ago? In Cal California Supreme Court. Wow. Salas, S-A-L-A-S, is the uh, lead name in the case. Salas is the lead name in the case. Right. Wow. Okay. So the due diligence on that part, is there some system to follow up on this? What can an employer, what can an employer do to ensure that, that they are not caught in that set of circumstances? Because I feel like we okay. could talk all day about labor law. <laughs> right. Well, and, 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 and the answer right now is nothing. I'm, I'm going to move my arms again here. Nothing. How could it be nothing? Because... The state's policy is to encourage people to work and be paid so that they can support themselves. The legality of their participation is beside the point. Mm. It's a real social issue. And now I'm going to ans answer that prediction question you asked me a few minutes yes. ago. Yes, I'm sorry. We did get a little distracted. So let's go back. Oh, to the but, but yes. isn't the distractions <laughs> really what it's well, all about these, in life, well, I think? Because these are, these are like gold nuggets. These are gold <laughs> gems. Because, you know, people normally pay you per hour to have these types oh. of conversations, right? And so to get your time and, to, like, and put this in a video and share it, like, this is huge. And I'm sitting here going, okay. Uh, yeah, like I got some takeaways that I need to go back and make sure that I print out all those documents from people clocking in, clocking out, um, and make sure that I keep stuff. Because I'm using, a, you know, I have my employees sign in and sign out electronically. Fine, fine. But I also have it in my um, handbook that you have to take a break, you know, two 10-minute breaks. Perfect. You have to take lunch. If you don't, you know, it's a terminatable offense. Right. I, I mean, but let's go back to the... Oh, my gosh, there's so much yeah, to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, like, there's so much to talk about. But let's go back to, like, based upon your experience, being in the business law, particularly dealing with the labor issues, um, where do you see this going? Like, where do you see small business, mid-sized business here in the Bay Area based upon labor laws? I, I believe that the political processes and work will push the system till it breaks, in other words, there will be an increasing socialization of the employment process, mm -hmm. increasing benefits incre for employees, uh, increasing penalties and risks for employers, creating more and more opportunities to make mistakes, what I call the traps for the unwary. Mm -hmm. More and more it's going to happen. Finally, businesses are going to start to flee this state. I mean, California... Golden State is, is not the only place to do business anymore. True. And so I think what we're going to see is uh, businesses are going to begin to leave the state, mostly for employment purposes, I believe. Um, and, and, then, and then there'll be that swing back. I mean, politics is just a pendulum back and forth and back right. and forth. And it's never right, is it? It's almost always too far one way or another. It's like that clock that's broken. It's right twice a day. And that's better than a clock that's running one minute slow. Oh, that's deep, John. That is deep. That is deep. So, so, so the takeaway, mm -hmm. businesses must be cautious. They must look at what they want to achieve, and they uh -huh. want to look at the foundations which will let them achieve that. And one of the foundations, good employee relations, 
proper documentation and proper insurance. One thing I keep coming, so I have clients come in, oh, I've just been sued by this employee. John, here's my insurance policy. Are we covered? My agent tells me we're not. Well, the agent's usually right, the unfortunately. The agent's usually right. Yeah, uh, but, but I dutifully look at it, uh, to, ho hoping to grab on something. Earl, how can I get my clients to be, those future clients who don't have their employee problem yet, how can I get coverage on employee wage claims, uh, overtime claims, and harassment claims, which is the other big one? Well, that's really simple. Just have them call me. Okay. There, there is coverage. Um, so the, in the insurance industry, you know, there's coverage under your business line. But under, I am so hungry, so sorry. <laughs> but yes, there, there are options out there in the commercial business insurance space to address, you know, a lot of these challenges. I think what I've seen so far is that people just have sticker shock. Um, but the reality of the situation is that it's cheaper to buy the right insurance uh, than it is to have to defend yourselves in court. And the best way for any business, whether they do business with myself or with another insurance company, is to have a sit down face to face with that with that agent and to make sure that that business and that agent address these concerns. Okay. So if you come to me looking for business insurance, I am going to insure you 360 I'm going to ask you who's your business lawyer and make sure that I've done everything that I can to build a firewall around you. Um, uh, so that's a commercial umbrella, that's business liability, that's um, that'd be great. That is general business, right. that's employment um, protection in case of you are sued for uh, sexual harassment. That's also um, liability in case your employees do something stupid and crazy and harms a customer. Right, um, right. That's also making and sure it could happen. And it can happen. That's <laughs> also making sure that you have the right workers' comp. Good. Um, right. You know, and those things cost, and there's a cost associated with that. But what, we, what I have seen from my days in banking, from my days of being in business banking, from the days of when we, I have seen the sheriffs deliver the 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 the, the summons, the, the order that says, hey, freeze this business account. Yeah. You yeah, know, or yeah. when I try to do a business loan and then the franchise board has, you know, has blocked that, that business, not because they didn't pay the $800 or whatever, that's because there's a pending litigation or something, you know. There's always something else going on. And then we typically find out that they're currently getting sued for something. So for me as an insurance professional, when I'm dealing with a business, yes, we're gonna have that in-depth conversation. I am going to 360 you, protect you. Um, and if that's not what you want, then I'm just not the agent for you because I don't wanna risk my license because we underinsured you because you didn't wanna spend the money that it takes to get the right coverage. Well, that coverage, I, I obviously the price varies on the circumstances, right. but that is something that every employer ought to seriously consider, and here's why. Um, again, I represent a lot of mom and pop, I'll call them. Things. Right. They've been sued by someone, and the claim is, is always fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. I don't care. It's always fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Remember, an hour for every missed rest break for at least three years. Okay, you're going to throw in other things. You're going to have those waiting time penalties, oh. and you're going to throw in other claims. You're going to say, "Well, my wage statement didn't have all the things that Section 226 of the Labor Code requires of it. I want a hundred dollars for every the, for the first statement that was inaccurate, and you know those statements I got every two weeks. I get another fifty dollars for each of those because it didn't have the right numbers or something. All right. Oh, God. Uh, r rarely successful unless the employer is doing the payroll himself because mm -hmm. every major payroll handles it. But what happens is now the person comes in to me. This is their life. I, I mean, this is, this, is, this is more than a source of income. This is who they are. Right. This is what they've invested in. And we have to talk about how one employee, one claim, puts the whole thing in jeopardy. Yes. We have to talk about... Do I give you a bankruptcy lawyer's name now, or do we wait and see? These things can be terrible. One employee can cause sleepless nights. Often my, my 
my clients are, are married, and so there's that interspousal thing. Honey, what have you done? What didn't you do? Mm-hmm. What's this going to mean? Are the kids going to be able to go to school? I kid you not. We have those kinds of conversations. This is traumatic wow. for people. You. Yes. Insurance is the first line of defense. It right. is honestly the first line of defense. And this is why I like the insurance industry, because it's the only industry out there that's interested in putting protection around people and or getting people restored back to where they were before something happened. But with that said, John, I want you to tell people how can they get in touch with you? How, What can they do to get in touch with you, You know how they reach you, how they find you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, John R. Parsons, my phone number here in Palo Alto, 650-321-8579. I've been practicing law for 39 years now, uh, and, and, and I, I still love it. What about a website? Don't you have a website? I do. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, JRP Law. You JRP put it, Law. JRP, L-A-W, W's in front, com at the end. And I'm also LinkedIn, John R. Parsons, LinkedIn. Is it JR, what's your website again? J, uh, JRP l a w dot com dot com got it that's his website all right you guys this has been amazing uh, to spend time with john parsons john is an amazing attorney um he is also the first person that i got to do this with this is our oh, yes hey this is always something <laughs> i wanted to do because i have all these resources you know i know all these people since i've moved here right and i'm like how do I start getting these people that I know that can help my clients or future clients? And I was like, you know what? I don't like video, but I'm going to start doing these. And so I'm really grateful. I will probably have him back on the on the show uh, to talk about other aspects of business law because you, the business owner, you have put all of your heart and soul into it. And there are things that you just need to know to ensure that you know, somebody just can't come along and take it, you know, right? You should be the only person to put yourself out of business. You, the business owner. And yes, Gary B., I stole that from you. Yes, I did. I did. All right, if you guys have questions, reach out to John about, you know, about the law. Reach out to John. If you have questions about business insurance and you want to have that conversation, give me a phone call at 650-880-9109. I'll put all both of our contacts information at the bottom of the video in the comment section. Um, and then also do us a favor, like, tag, and share this video with your other business friends because they're, they need to know this and, and hear this as well. And yes, John will help you in any part of the state of California. I love talking to people. Wait a minute, you're also licensed in Arizona too, right? Uh, no, just California. Okay, just California. Okay. Al- al- although although I, I do have what you might call visiting rights in several states. <laughs> but, 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 but only licensed in California. Only licensed in California. I'm licensed in the state of California as well. We appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching. And ch- share with us a note in the, you know, in the comment section. What did you like? What did you get out of this? what value we bring to the table, and what other topics do you, or questions that you have. Yeah. We'll pick some of yeah. the best questions. We'll ask John to give up a few minutes of his time again and then answer those questions. Now, mind you, any advice that he gives you on this, you know, he is not your attorney. you got to put that little disclaimer thing oh, right there. Oh, yeah. Yes. We, we always throw that nonsense out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, yeah. you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.